Mernda, Australia. Oh. This is Mernda right here. And this okay. is the right place because the victim worked here in South Morong. I will tell you that I could not find the actual address, but we do have a photo of the house. So we're just going to kind of see what this looks like. Yeah, one of these houses here. Pretty nice. Give way. That's a sign. Does that mean yield? I guess so, right? Yes. I, I mean, it's the same uh, sign. Yeah. Shape. So this is Mernda. All right. I'm trying well, to remember a headline that we did in Mernda. We did this a headline no, story? Was, okay. Well, yes, it is. It's a headline that I found yesterday and posted, but. Which we haven't talked about yet. No, because we're doing the story. All right. November 16th, 2020. This is 348 in the morning. This house, mother and daughter are sleeping quietly. All of a sudden, the mother wakes up because there is a crashing sound. <laughs> But it's one of those where, did I hear that or was I dreaming? Either way, I'm woken up now. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I heard that or not because I, I'm not hearing anything else. But then she can hear her daughter, which is down the hall in her room. Her daughter is 23 years old. Her daughter was gasping for air. <gasps> And this is, like I said, middle of the night. The mother told this to the Herald Sun. Quote, I thought I was having a horrible nightmare when I heard the shattering of the glass. And it wasn't until I heard you gasping that I knew it was real. Now she's saying this to her daughter. It wasn't until I was finally told that the crash I went to was not the crash of him breaking in, but the crash of him leaving. I slept through the last two minutes and 39 seconds of the most horrific and crucial moments of my daughter's life. And I was too late to protect her or be any use of her. Okay, so tonight we are talking about a story that's in the news now. The trial's going on. And it's a terrible story. And it's one that y'all should listen to. Because this... Uh this is a social media story. Oh, boy. As the ambulance arrives five minutes later, not even, she said it was two minutes and 39 seconds when the crash she heard happened. The ambulance is pulling in. The mother's daughter's killer is seen on CCTV video pulling out of the driveway while the ambulance is pulling in. Wow. That's how quick it was. That's how quick they responded. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, I'll move out the way, but it was pretty close. Okay. The ambulance arrives at this home and the mother is attempting to quote, breathe life back into her daughter. She doesn't know CPR. She doesn't know what she's doing. There's blood everywhere. Her daughter has been hurt somehow. The window's broken of her daughter's bedroom. The daughter is gasping for air. The mother tries her best to breathe life back into her daughter and the paramedics get there and they have to pull the mother off because now it's their turn to use their equipment to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. The mother will never, ever for her entire life get that lifeless image of her daughter from her mind. This is what she tells the courtroom. I'm never going to get that image out of my head. The look in your eyes was so distant. I knew you were gone, but I didn't want to believe it. This woman right here, her name is Celeste. Y'all heard this story? It's going on right now in the news. Mm-mm. I mean, it happened in 2020, but now the trial the, is not the trial, happening. Yep, and this okay. is in Australia. Celeste, here, 23 years old, was stabbed 23 times in her bed. And before she even knew what was happening, she her life was fading away. The whole thing only took two minutes and 39 seconds. That's quick. The entire thing. And she is struggling to hang on to life in her bed while paramedics are rushing in. Outside, we see blood stains over the gate. That's a side gate that connects both houses. Mm -hmm. And we see blood blood dripping down. Yeah, it kind of looks like a hand. Is that a handprint maybe? Yeah, it is a handprint. Whoever had blood on their hands. Literally. Literally had climbed over this fence right after they left the premises. All right, look at this photo right here. Everyone see this photo. Can you describe this photo? Um, looks like a young couple, you know? Yeah. Uh, are they, are they on vacation or somewhere tropical, but looks like a young Either friend or couple or, you know, something like that. I mean, they're leaning it like leaning in body language wise. So I'm assuming they're together. This is the first and last photo that Celeste and her new boyfriend would ever take. This photo right here is the reason she was murdered. It was posted only a few hours before to her Instagram. Uh oh. And this this photo is the main reason that whoever came to her house did what they did because of this photo right here. 
right here. And as I said, this photo that was posted to her Instagram, he didn't really have social media, but she had Instagram, which was private. This photo was just posted a few hours before. And then she goes to bed and then that's it. So my immediate mind goes to, was there like a jealous ex-boyfriend or did she have a, a stalker or something who was obsessed with her and was jealous, you know? Yeah, maybe. The post of the photo she made on Instagram, and I don't have social media, so forgive me if this sounds stupid, but it was the Insta official status that she's in a relationship. Oh, does Instagram have like relationship status? I I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't I've know. never had an Instagram. So she made this post with a photo letting all of her family know that she is officially in a relationship with her new boyfriend. Not even 15 minutes after the murder, when she is now gone, she's passed, the mother's crying and grieving. And as you'll see, the cops have to pull her back because she is trying to run through the tape, still trying to breathe life back into her daughter somehow. Not even 15 minutes. This is all happening. We go about two kilometers away. The ambulance is still at their home. The mother is still trying to get breath into her daughter. And at 410, we're now at the local Mernda police station. Mm -hmm. A car, a 2017 Pugiat Black, speeds into the police parking lot and collides with another parked vehicle. This is at 410 a.m. Mm, okay. A man gets out and he starts yelling at the police, quote, she's dead. She's dead. Go have a look. This man says he's the one that did it. I killed her. I used a hammer to break into her bedroom window. I used a kitchen knife to kill her. Wait, he said he's the one that did it as in referring to himself? Mm-hmm. Okay. He's turning himself in. I stabbed her. They'll see the autopsy will show that she was stabbed 23 times. He left the murder weapon in the room. The total time time of this murder was two minutes and 39 seconds at the police station quote she's dead she's dead go have a look this is your fault that's what he says he talks about how he escaped through the window hopping the side fence and leaving blood on the fence at that point he's actually taken to the hospital for surgery because he has deep hand lacerations this is the guy right here that supposedly did it what can you describe this guy um, he looks a little bit older, maybe, than the girl who's 23. I mean, he's a uh, very skinny, white, maybe, uh, uh, kind of hard to tell, dark hair, glasses. You know who he looks like? Hmm. And I don't, dude... I'm not trying to be like funny or anything, but the whole time I was doing the story, I just, it was driving me nuts, man. I was like, who was this guy you remind me of? And it finally yeah. came to me and it was this photo here. That photo was like on my mind. Like, who was this guy you remind me of? Finally, it came to me and he reminds me of this guy. Joey, Joey Greco. Greco. Yeah, right? I mean, do they not look kind of Can the same? Can go back? Right? Yeah, I do see it. I definitely see right? it. Right? I'm not trying to be funny or anything, but I it was literally mm -hmm. eating my mind for hours when I was doing this. I was like, what the fuck? And finally, it was like, okay, I know who he looks like now. Yeah, I agree with you. I, yeah, I right? think that's spot on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's maybe a older aged photo of yeah, Joey yeah, yeah, Greco, yeah. but I agree from like season one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That looks to me exactly like Joey Greco. Yeah, right there. I see yeah. it. I see it. Uh, let I definitely me see, see it. From season one, I don't know if there's a better photo. But yeah, like maybe like this, kind of. I don't know. Yeah, I, I totally see that. Yeah. Man, we used to be obsessed with that fucking show. Yeah, we still watched that That shit time. was rotting our brain, dude. Yeah, it was. It was, it was awful. trash. Garbage. No shit. Um, trash but yeah, I, I, I would say that is spot on. Anyway, okay, so that was the... That's that's the person who just turned himself in, basically. Yeah, the supposed killer. We we don't know if... And he makes a statement, he killed her. Yeah, he's... Referring to himself in the third person. Mm -hmm. or Or he didn't say his own name, but he's like, he killed him, but he's... He's like talking about himself, about himself. Yeah, exactly. Weird. Okay. But then he also says, I did. Yeah. He's, so he, 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 back just, and forth. he just said, I just killed, I just killed okay, this woman. I just want to make sure I'm getting that right. Yeah. So this here is Celeste Mano. Celeste, you can probably know how to spell that. And then Mano, M-A-N-N-O. This is her here. Her younger brother is here on the uh, left side of her. 
She is the only daughter of two brothers. This is the younger brother here, Alessandro, and the older brother is Jaden, and she's in the middle. She is 23 years old. Actually, in six days, she would have been 24 years old, so okay. very young. The man that I showed you earlier, the supposed killer at the time was 35 years old. Okay, he was older. He didn't look that old, maybe, but okay. What up, Oregonian? Oh, what's up, man? So let's talk about Celeste a little bit. Who is this and how did how did this happen? Mm-hmm. She is a former high school cheerleader, 23 years old. Her godmother, Pena, said, quote, no one deserves this, but least of all her. She was beautiful. She never did a thing wrong, end quote. She had recently graduated university mm-hmm. under criminal justice, and she was working at a call center for Servco. Servco is, from what I've seen, is like a huge everything brand over in uh, Australia. Okay. So like something that has their hands, it's like an Amazon, all, like they do global this, that, sell things, shipping, all kinds of stuff. Okay. She was actually working in the call center, building calls for CenturyLink, okay. which is a security, social security payment service they have in Australia. Okay. Can you read what uh, this tweet here from Maddie Johnston? Or this might be Instagram. This is about Celeste. Uh, Fly high, beautiful girl, the most loving, generous, and kind-hearted friend to everyone around her. Celeste Mano, you will be missed. I will forever cherish the memories that we made and for the friendship that we gained. This world can be cruel and you did not deserve this at all. Love you, girl. Rest in peace. One heartbroken friend said online, quote, Celeste Mano was the most kind, brightest, down-to-earth person who I was lucky to call a friend. She always knew how to light up a room with her bubbly, sweet nature. She was an absolute angel who didn't deserve a tragic ending like this. The world has truly lost a ray of sunshine today. All right. As I said, she studied criminology at the uni- at university. She's a recent graduate. Her brother, Jaden, said that she was, quote, the most bright, lively, and the most intelligent one of of all of us and the best of all of us. Mm. Her younger brother, Alessandro, said, quote, she was beautiful. She was my best friend and no one else in this world knows me like she did. We were joined since kids. I've never had a bond like that ever and I won't ever again. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Can you read the next one? This is what the mother says. So this is going on right now. The trial's going on right now. So the mother is, it's, it's hard to watch the mother because she is, she she truly lost her best friend that mm-hmm. night and you and she's going through all kinds of ranges of emotion I, that'd be hard to keep your emotions in check over something like that so. and but she is she just she lost her best friend you can tell so like watching her i'm not going to put y'all through that but watching her is like the most heartbreaking thing You want me to read what she said? Mm -hmm. Don't highlight it. Okay. You forgave everything and everyone, sweetie, but not me. I am not forgiving. I want the alleged killer to burn in hell. I wish we would have gone together, sweet pea. I will get the justice you deserve. So let's talk about this guy. This is uh, supposedly the killer here, Joey Greco looking guy. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about him. We talked about Celeste. Let's talk about him. His name is Lue Sacco. He's 37 now of Roxburgh Park. Okay. Can you read what the mother said? She didn't know him and she didn't want to know him. He was a co-worker to her. Nothing more. She didn't provoke or insult him, Your Honor. Celeste had no interest in him and he couldn't accept it, she told the court. She wasn't walking alone at night. She didn't put herself in dangerous situations. She didn't associate with the wrong crowd or make poor choices, Miss DeMauro, mother of Celeste, said. All right, let me, let me just, I think this is a good time to quickly bring up the broken system. Um, And this is just what I'm seeing. So uh, if you're in Australia, you can weigh in. But the stalking situation for females on social media accounts, there's nothing really being done about it. And we're going to see that she was stalked. But this is women who have been killed in just in Melbourne over the past few years after being stalked on social media. Wow. So Jill Mager, 29, uh, Yukling Law, 32, uh, Masa, you know, all, all these women. So more common than you think. 
Exactly. So the family is now also, as the trial is going on, demanding some kind of change in the way police handle stalkers. Mm. Because as you'll see, this man has been stalking Celeste for a long time and yet has never been visited by the police at his house. The mother was never told or anything, anything to curb that besides a piece of paper. Wow. And at the end of the day, I mean, restraining orders, that's all they are is a piece of paper. You know what I'm saying? That's not, it's not a barrier. It's a piece of paper, Mm -hmm. you know? Lue Sacco, 37, he worked briefly at the same call center in South Morong as she did. She was the team leader. Okay. She's a graduate, intelligent, smart. She yep. she worked hard. She worked her way up. She's the team leader now. So he mm-hmm. was under her. Okay. He, 35-year-old, nothing going for him, can't really keep a job. He was the, you know, one of her subordinates. Right. He wasn't very good at his job because he's he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. He was fired from the company. Okay. The company policy is, and I don't know if it's like this here or whatever. Like I said, I never had a job outside the military, but the company policy is if you're fired, the manager, your direct manager has to walk you out with your stuff and in in the box type of thing. Okay. You know, it's like on that Wall Street movie. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think, obviously I'm not in an office anymore. Um, I wouldn't walk someone out to their car necessarily, um, but I would be, and it wouldn't be the manager, actually, it would be the HR person who would make sure they boxed up their things. Actually, we would just say, whatever you need to get yourself home, purse, keys, jacket, whatever, and then we would box up the rest of their things and make sure that they left out the lobby. Like, I wouldn't necessarily walk them to their car but I would walk them to the lobby and make sure that they exited mm. and make sure. And we'd have like security guard, you know, if, if we needed to was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this is how this exchange goes down. This is how the interactions start. As you're going to see, this is a stalker and he has stalked her on social media. He was working under her at the call center. He gets fired. She has to walk him out and she feels bad that he got fired and she is trying to put on her best face or put on her best, you know, Mm -hmm. showing him that it's going to be okay type of thing. And I don't know how he took it, but can you read this from the Daily Mail? From the Daily Mail, Miss Mano had shown kindness to Sacco on his final day, walking him to his car and wishing him well before he unexpectedly kissed her on the cheek. He kisses her on the cheek and that was unexpected to her. She's like, whoa, what? Okay. She's going to forget about it because this guy's gone, right? Okay. You know, good luck. Good luck. I hope you find a new job. Good luck. Forget about it. Whatever. Oh, man. If uh, if uh, someone had leaned forward, though, towards me, I would have immediately Fucking, backed away. Oh, yeah. I mean, but if you didn't expect it, you know, I think he she just, was just young. Like uh, she shouldn't have been by herself doing that. Oh, no, she should not have been by herself. She should not have been by herself. Because at 23, I would not have known what to do. But today, if that happened to me, I'd be like, whoa, get out. Nope. No, Thanks for playing. Just go straight for the nads, man. If you're a woman, if you're a woman and you're ever in trouble, if you can reach them nads, go for them. Kick them, punch them, pull them, squeeze them, cut them, whatever you can do. If you can reach those little dangling berries, man, freaking take those things because that takes a man down. I don't care how big you are. Those little old nuggets will take that man down. (laughs) I swear to God. And that is like sincerely telling you if you're ever in a situation, if someone's got you in a bear hug, try to reach under your leg, grab them fucking nuts and squeeze, squeeze them as hard as you can until they pop. I'm serious. They, They will not freaking get up. They will be on the ground and you have plenty of chances to run away. It, there's no guy in the world that can withstand that. Ain't that right, Oregonian? He knows. I mean, every guy is... This is uh, self-defense with John. I'm serious, man. 100%, <laughs> dude. They teach you that shit in the Krav Magra, too. Do they? Yeah, for if you're a woman. Yeah, go straight for them. But Interesting. Yeah, I took like two classes and that's it. So he unexpectedly kisses her on the cheek. She's freaked out, but she's like, okay, at least this guy's gone. And then over the next few months, he starts, quote... It's pep- not immediate. Interesting. Yeah, he starts, quote, peppering her with creepy, lewd, and menacing 
sending messages via Instagram. She would block him at first, and then what? He's just like, okay, I guess she's not interested. New account. New account. Hundreds of new accounts. Hundreds? Hundreds. Over the months. Hundreds of new accounts. Oh, boy. This guy became obsessed. She had to change her phone number, quote, almost weekly. Now, this is months. Jesus. He was fired not even a year before her murder. And so this is all leading up to it. It began in January with, quote, vulgar and disgusting messages on Instagram. Can you read from Celeste's brother, Jaden? We filed restraining orders and it took a big process. At first, she'd be nice to him and say, look, thank you, but not interested. Then he kept getting obsessive and obsessive. So eventually she had to block him. And this is not fault of Celeste. No. But she is, she's even getting these messages and trying to diffuse the situation with her kindness. You know what I'm saying? Sure. She's not trying to be a jerk. You know, she's trying to like let him yeah. down slowly and just say like, appreciate it, but no. It got so bad really quick that they had filed a restraining order and he had already been charged with breaching one of those restraining orders. But the cops never really intervened because that's not the policy over there. And that's why they're kind of pushing for change. Ah. And stuff like that. Interesting. Okay. This is telling. A week after he was fired, one week after she walked him to his car and he kisses her. So this is how quick, quick it goes. A week after he was fired... Celeste goes to her direct supervisor and says, quote, he's really going to kill me. That should have that should have ended it right there. Now, I'm not I, hindsight's 2020, but hopefully the family can push this new law into action where when the company hears something like that, police intervention is a requirement. They should visit this guy. They should they should put him in prison for a little bit. You know, if he keeps doing it, then put him in there longer. They should be monitoring and stuff you know this is all hindsight but Mm. this is some you know i just showed you all those women that this happened to before and it happened to them nothing's changed and now it happened to another one celeste so jesus hopefully scary yeah and this is not just in australia this is everywhere you know i'm saying this happens just dude and her account from what i'm seeing her instagram account was private so but she had thousands of followers so i guess making an account to trick her or whatever to get Get into her friends list. I don't know because he saw that photo, the one I showed you, and that's what triggered him to do this. Wow! He had sent her 140 unsolicited messages, many sexually explicit, in the months before her murder. He also sent her a three-page letter pleading for her to drop the restraining charges. Wow. Okay. She then filed an intervention order, and then this is what the mother said. The mother, as you'll see, is taking all this blame on herself. She couldn't save her daughter that night. She was supposed to be the protector. And none of that's true, but in the mother's mind, still... It's the mother's fault. And it's not, but that's what the mother's going through. And that's why it's heartbreaking. But can you read this from their mother? Oh, gosh. Go to HR. We're not all that bad. Go to HR. Yeah, if you want to get canned. I'm just kidding. Hey. Um, we actually thought it was over. We thought he'd learned his lesson, Miss Morrow said. It provided a false sense of security, and that proved to be our downfall. Here's some of the uh, messages. This is from Lua to Celeste, unsolicited. Quote, I'm sorry, but I can't stop thinking about you. I have never felt like this about anybody in my entire life. It's bordering along a OCD. I'm totally infatuated with you, captivated and fascinated by you. You are all I think about. After leaving you, my productivity, after, I mean, he says after leaving you. So she, he it's was. a good call out on his choice of words, yeah. He was only working at that center for not even that long, you know, a couple months max, and he was fired. She never gave him any indication that she was interested. No, because she was his supervisor. Exactly. And he's older. He's 35 years old, you know? And so she, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Never even thought thought about this. And now he said, quote, after leaving you, what do you mean leaving you? You got fired. Yeah. So that this one line shows you the obsessive stalk stalker that this guy is. Right. It says, quote, after leaving you, my productivity and my personal life in my new job has become impacted. Now, I want to say that he never got a new job after getting fired. He was still living at mama's house unemployed. 
So this obsession with you, which is a crush, is an addictive and destructive feeling that is interfering with my ability to concentrate, deal with others, and go about my daily routine. Jesus. I'm so infuriated with you that it's now become unhealthy. I know my words don't help. I'm sorry for coming on strong, Celeste. I'm just another rival for your affection. I'm truly sorry for making you feel uncomfortable. I really just wanted to speak with you, and I honestly thought you were ignoring me. My impression of you has changed. You are no different to the majority. You you are no different to the majority of women. I'll remember you and this lesson for all life, and I will devote every ounce of energy I have to climbing up and proving to the world that I'm somebody. This is my promise to you and my final contact with you, which was not. He writes more. This is how sweet she is. Even after the, all these restraining orders and everything else, the the police, not to blame them because this is, this is the system set up and it's broken. They should have been intervening with this the whole time. She should never have to try to defuse something like this herself. She's 23. She's very vulnerable. So she would say something like this in response to all his 140 unsolicited messages. If you want to read this one. Hi, Lue. Those are really sweet words, and I appreciate you saying all of that to me. I'm a bit surprised to read this all as it is new to me. As much as I appreciate this, I only feel a professional way towards you, and I wish you all of the best in your new job and journey. So very, very kind and professional mm -hmm. and agree, Shram, you make a great point. People rarely talk to HR as it is. So if someone drops something like that, it needs to be taken seriously because it clearly is. Yeah. And HR, they're not going to they're not going to out your name and stuff. You have to complain against someone, right? No, especially because he he was he was already fired um but but what, what all right so you're in, what would you do if someone came to you and said one of the managers said i fired someone recently and they're stalking me what would you do we would get law enforcement involved and we would make sure we would probably do extra things as a company to make sure that uh like there was security walking her to her car extra security at the office well that was only that one time this is before the stalking i know but like those are things that if if we knew that that sort of thing was going on we would maybe even oh yeah when she's at work walking. after yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. yeah. like he make, might be there yeah yeah we, okay we yeah. would like beef up security we would probably talk to security hmm. one time we had um we did have someone who made some threats and like we sent up we sent police to somebody's door hmm. um that usually stop solves a lot of problems it usually man. yes it usually does and in that case they were like Oh my God, I was joking. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Um, like I didn't mean it. It took a, it took a police officer to show up at this. It was a female, this woman's door to realize like you, you can't be joking. Uh, like this is for real. So what if, what if one of your managers came up and said, quote, he's really going to kill me again. I, I would Ew. say if you, if, if we're that concerned, we need it. I would call my head of HR. I would get security involved, especially if this is an in office environment um it, this it's bigger than just like it's bigger than the company type of a situation yeah there's only so much that the company can do since they already fired the person mm -hmm. right but still we want to make sure that the but they gotta employee, protect their employee yeah. yeah feels feels protected and that if anything happens on company property like i would be checking in with this person often to see she how was, she's doing you know we we don't know now but i mean her family this will come out in the trial as it's currently happening but the family will most likely say that she was probably scared walking to her car mm -hmm. sleeping at i'm night. not saying the company did anything wrong necessarily yeah. other than maybe they they should have been made aware of the situation all right can you read the next one this is just uh reiterating one of his texts the, this obsession with you is addictive and destructive feeling interfering with my ability to concentrate, deal with others and go about my daily routine. He said in one of about 140 unwanted messages. Let's talk about Louie's family and you know what they think of all this. They condemn it, obviously, like any family would. They said that he was a, quote, loner and an introvert who spent most of his time in his bedroom, not speaking to anyone. So he's still living with mom, dad and 
and he just is confined to his bedroom making Instagram accounts. That's all he's doing. He doesn't have a job or anything. And there's nothing wrong with living. If you're a... Uh, thank you, Wolfie. <laughs> if you're 35, 40, there's nothing wrong living with your mama. Like, you know, my uncle lived there until he was like over 40, you know? Mm-hmm. But he, I mean, he was also like, he's also a computer engineer. So he's, you know, he probably saved up a million dollars before he moved out. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, he's, yeah, that, well, he wasn't like actively stalking somebody. He was, you know, actually working. Yeah. He worked on the farm yeah. and it was just easier to stay with, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not bad to be living yeah. at home. I didn't, I didn't want to come off and say yeah, yeah, yeah. because some of the news were like, oh, there's 35 year olds living at home. I mean, there's definitely a little bit of that, co- that connotation, but. So he was living at home. He wasn't getting a job. He was making all these Instagram accounts and he was not even talking to his family downstairs. Uh, the mother of. Of Lue, uh, Toll said, I wish I was killed instead, not a young woman on the cusp of her life. Oh, thank you for the hearts. Is that you, Oregonian, giving me all those hearts? Must be. Thank you for whoever's doing that. I don't know what it does besides just make us, make feel, us feel good. good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it is kind of cool, man. I think you can change it, too. I think there's other ones. I don't know. All right, let's talk a little bit about this dude, right? Here's what we know so far. And like I said, this is all being, this is all currently developing. He has a younger brother, this guy right here. And this guy, his younger brother was sentenced to six years for killing a man at a nightclub. So that's that doesn't look good at all. No, it does not. This is very important. Lue had no mental health issues whatsoever. Never documented for anything. He was not taking medications. This was his first time in custody. However, because you're going to see this guy is not only a terrible person for what he did, but he's still a terrible person. However, despite no mental health issues, he obtained a second opinion recently that deemed him, quote, mentally unfit to stand trial. Now, that that is an opinion. That isn't a uh, that isn't concrete. In fact, the trial's going on right now. And is he standing trial? So I guess so. Yeah, he's standing trial. So it did not hold up at all. He pleaded not guilty when he was first charged, not guilty to the murder. He later changed it to guilty. Hmm. The reason he wanted to get the second opinion is because he wants to support his quote poor mental health. He actually got a top high profile psychiatrist this is a uh i'm sure it's a glamour a case, case. Yeah. yeah this is a glamour case you know so what happens in these glamour cases is you have access to the best the best famous lawyers because they want to be seen in the spotlight that's just how it is and not only lawyers but also experts that you can get to Mm. write you a, a 30 page document basically a high profile forensic psychiatrist dr andrew carroll wrote a 30 page report in a 30 page report dr carroll found sacco was not only unfit to stand trial over the alleged murder but would remain that way for at least the next year this is very important this psychiatrist is claiming that sacco had a quote complicated situation this report is complicated. This report isn't public, but it is important because stuff like this could get him released. Not like, okay, you're innocent, but he could potentially go to a mental health facility based on this high profile, famous psychiatrist. Mm. And if the, this psychiatrist says, yeah, he needs to be treated for mental health issues, he could be treated and then released back into society quote, in secret, which is what I, I, I don't know how they do it in Australia. They do it over here in secret, but the news stations pick it up. The family goes to the news stations and then it's like, oh, they're releasing this shithead who fucking did all this, you know, and then it becomes a big thing. I don't know how it is in Australia, but they don't publicize that they're going to release him. He could actually get get that done. You know, we don't know. I mean, the trial's still going on. Like I said, at first, he pleaded not guilty to the murder and he refused to attend attend his first court hearing. His mother called it a, quote, cowardly act. Then he started refusing to take his pills after, you know, he went to the psychiatrist and got all these disorders, which were not not made public yet. He's refusing to take his pills. 
because he says he's fearing the guards are trying to poison him. Eventually, he changes his plea to guilty to one charge of murder. Mm. He then dumps his lawyers, which were also high profile lawyers who helped to quit some uh, some big killer that I haven't done, some ki- some serial killer, kind of literally a Johnny Cochran situation, right? He dumps those lawyers and now he's representing himself currently. He's currently in trial representing himself. In, in he's fact, really going whole hog on he's not mentally fit, didn't he? And honestly, probably right now he's talking because what is it? Australia? It's yeah. 12 hours later, some shit. So the, Before, later, the trial's going on right this second, right? So he is now representing himself. And the reason why, and he's trying to get the whole case thrown out, is because you remember when I said there was 23 stab wounds? Mm-hmm. Can you read one of his issues? The issue I'm raising is the allegation that I inflicted 23 wounds when I know and believe I only inflicted two wounds. And 21 others were a result of glass-inflicted injuries. Hmm. So that's that's not I true. feel like he's just... Do you think he's acting with this whole thing of of uh, he's make, doing all this to make it seem like he really is mentally unfit? I don't know. I mean, there's no video of the inside the courtroom. So it's only stuff hmm. that I'm reading. And I don't know if Australia allows news media in there because it seems like there's scant material. Hmm. But anyway... So he's saying, I only stabbed Celeste twice. The other ones were a result of glass shattering. Well, the forensic forensic pathologist who he has cross-examined said, no, that's not correct. Those other stab wounds... A lot of them are defensive wounds, you know, when she's trying to not get you to stab her to death. So he has not only contested the number of stab wounds that he has inflicted on Celeste, which is also a horrible thing. This is another reason that makes him a horrible person, because the autopsy's there. She was stabbed 23 times. Everyone knows that. Move on. But hold on. No, let's bring it back up. Let's have the mother and the brother, the two brothers. Let's have them sit here, the grandmother, the godmother, and let Let's go through this step by step, bringing in all the details, because that's what happens when you contest something like this. Let's bring the forensic pathologist and I'm going to cross examine him. So this guy is now cross examining this doctor currently in trial. In doing so, the family has to relive the moment day and day and day and day and day. And honestly, I don't know this for a fact, but I've been doing this for quite a while. He's probably reliving it, too, in in a way that makes him whatever, however it gets him off. They like to relive the crime. You know what I'm saying? The family has been so disgusted that many of them have walked out of the courtroom. Also, he is arguing currently that he didn't run to his car, like the police report said. He, quote, walked walked briskly like any of the shit matters it doesn't but he just wants to torture it seems like torture the family forensic pathologist dr bedford said some of miss mano's arm injuries appeared to be defensive wounds suggesting that miss mano had tried to fend off her attacker in unusual scenes sacco conducted his own cross examination of dr bedford questioning him about the conclusions in his autopsy report sacco argued most of the injuries suffered by miss mano were caused by shards of glass on the floor not the knife he was carrying. I stick to my claim that I only inflicted two stab wounds, Psycho said. Either way, one of those stab wounds went straight through her heart. So, you know, a Mm. piece of glass did not penetrate through her heart. Nope. That was a knife. Jeez, goodness. (laughs) So the mother is pleading with the justice. That's what they call the judges over there, the justices, to give him at least life. I don't think they've had the death penalty since Martin Bryant, the guy who shot up Australia. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I think they, I, I mm-hmm. want to say, and I might not be correct, but I want to say they abolished it because of that case, because it was just too many killings, you know? They were like, there's too many people dying, we don't even want to kill the killer. I, I don't know, though, but I think somebody told me that. But I don't think they have death penalty, so the mm-hmm. most he can get is life in prison. However, there's a minimum that you have to serve, it's 25 years, if you're convicted, which is not a lot. No. He'll be, what, 50, 60 when he gets out, you know? My sweetie was failed mid- Miserably, She was failed by a flawed system. The police and she was failed by me. Something I'll have to live with for the rest of my life because of this beast. So I'm begging you, please don't allow Celeste to be failed by the system that already failed her over and over again. The mother is really emotional, as she should be. In fact, after the murder on the lawn where the police had cordoned off the area... 
she kept running through the tape screaming, quote, how did I not protect her? Mm. She has shouted at this man, Sacco, representing himself, shouted at him, which he'll never look her in the eye, but shouted at him from the witness stand, calling him a beast Mm. and says stuff like, quote, look at me. What did you achieve? You're such a coward. At least look at me. Is this what your family raised? Wow. You showed her. You showed me. You showed the world who you were. You called yourself a beast. You are a beast. You're an evil, repulsive, demonic beast. You threatened to kill yourself at the train station. I felt sorry for you. God, I wish you'd done it. So the mother, the mother was going through this with her daughter, too. The daughter was transparent. Yeah. And this guy had said, I'm going to kill myself at the train station to Celeste. And the mother felt sorry for him because she's also a really good person. Mm, goodness. Voiced over a photo montage of Miss Mono's short life, Miss DeMauro told the court she could not forgive herself for failing to save her daughter that awful night. I'll never forgive myself, sweetie. Never. How did I not hear it? How did I not hear you? Did you scream, sweetie? Did you call me? You must have. What were you thinking, baby? Where was I? Why wasn't I coming? I'm so sorry, sweetie. I'm sorry I failed you. People say I couldn't have changed the outcome. Maybe not, but I'll never know. God. It was because that the picture, and no one would know, know that. She says in court, talking to him, which he refuses to look at her, look up, look ahead. I'm here, you gutless, gutless wonder. I hate you, and the only other person I hate more than you is me. Oh. Oh my god that's that oh man i didn't read that before i just copied and pasted it but that is that's that's oh, bad oh god that makes the only wanna... person i hate more than you is me i don't think i've ever heard something that fucking oh, sad before like i said i just pasted her commentary and i didn't read it that one really got me i hate you and the only other person i hate more than you is me that's what the mother tells him you extinguish one of the only two reasons i live for she was everything to me nothing to you my sweetie felt safe with me. I thought she was safe with me, but she wasn't. Was she? I couldn't protect her from you. Oh, my God. At first, when I was reading this, and, you know, I didn't really realize she was 23, but I, I really get it now. The mother. This is going to make perfect sense to you. But I put comma despite her age, but I don't even need to put that. The mother still tucked the daughter in every night. She lived at home, tucked her in. They would watch movies on the sofa. Celeste's birthday was coming up in six days, and the mom was excited and already planning a celebration. Celeste really wanted to have coconut cake this year. She wanted... She wanted mom to learn how to make coconut cake. That's all she wanted. She thought it'd be fun for mo mother and daughter to make it together. And that's all she wanted for her birthday. <laughs> Since the murder, she has baked three coconut cakes and left them at the daughter's grave. Oh, my God. This is rip your heart <laughs> out right here. Desiree says, honestly, as a mother, you don't know how much I worry for my daughter and son as well. I, I can't imagine, honestly. I mean, I know John and I joke like we can handle kids and all that stuff, but I also can't imagine, I really can't imagine, one, <laughs> raising a kid is not easy nowadays, but it's because you would, I would worry to myself to death. Yeah. Especially that if, especially if he had a daughter. Yeah. Oh my God. I literally couldn't handle it. I mean, I worry so much about our dogs. I worry, you know, like I, it's like undiagnosed formal anxiety probably, but I, um, I can't even, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. And I, while I absolutely have, would have no idea what she is going through. I'm not a mother. don't have children. I, if I try to put myself in her shoes, I would probably be saying something very similar, just just out of pure love. Yeah, that that quote. Oh my god, that was terrible. I mean, and that was Ugh. she didn't plan that. She was screaming at this guy because he wouldn't even look at her. Ugh. Oh my god, and he's got the the gall to I'm gonna he cross you know you know cross examine say, and say I didn't I only stabbed her twice. Not that that makes it any better. Cross examine not only him but the mother because the mother was there at the night. I mean just dragging the family through complete hell the whole time. You know and all they've done is try to help him show sympathy for him. She never said you know what fuck off stop contacting me. She never said that. You know she only went to the police because she was scared. 
you know, and then he writes her a three page letter pleading with her not to go to the police. The fact that you're writing a three page letter should tell you why you have a fucking restraining order on you, dude. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And quote, you are quote, when you left me or what what was it? Yeah. When you left me. When you left me. She was never with you, you piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So if you want to look up some heartbreaking stuff, look up the mother, man. Oh. I mean, the whole family's going through it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying the mother's really taking, taking it out. hard. Yeah, she's taking all the brunt. Mm. I mean, but this is, this is, this happened 2020, November. So 2021, basically, right before 2021, right for the new year. So that was what, three years ago? Uh, oh, she made the three coconut cakes for her birthdays since th- yeah. that's how many birthdays it's been. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cause they didn't say that. It just said since she's then. She's made one every, every year for her uh, birthday. Yeah. That makes sense. As if it was in 2020 yeah. i'm sure she'll be making one until the day she dies oh my god but that is uh god damn y'all wanted me to do stories during the week that is well that is all on the case i <sighs> i went back to the first time celeste mano's name was mentioned in any news article and it was the 17th of november 2020 and since then i worked my way up through all the pages getting every bit of information wow. i could until right now which shit is coming out the, the latest update was like 15 minutes ago when i you know wow. before we started this thank you for for so. your pun Oh, well, I, um, I really hope justice is appropriately served. Shit. I fucking hope so. I really do. I showed you all you the other bring women. back the death penalty. The all, those other women I showed you, the exact same thing happened. The stalking, the killing, you know, and it's not like get off. I don't want to say get off social media because, you know, it, you can't, I mean, it initiated at work. You, you can't know? live your life on, at with fear, fear, but still like, well, th- it's, invi- gotta, it's definitely inviting, not inviting things. But it it's in it's a ripe opportunity, right? Like for people to get in touch with you and learn all things about you that they otherwise wouldn't have. When they when they recovered his computer, not only did he have photos of her, but he had also looked up the new boyfriend's name. Now, remember, she just went public. She yeah. just went public with this a few hours before she was murdered. So he saw that they were on a family trip. The boyfriend, the new boyfriend. This is the first time the public learning about it that Mm -hmm. they were together insta official or whatever so he within a few hours looked up his name and got his name which is you know very scary we're gonna keep updated with the headlines i got an rss feed on that so we'll be doing that every day but thanks for listening that's all i got for the story that's all there is is still going on all right well thanks guys for listening and i'll be on the discord here a little bit playing video games but still there and that's all i got let's hope that the the man of family gets the justice that they rightly deserve and let's hope that this is changes something with the system because i showed you many women who this is happening to and it needs to stop so anyway till next time good night you lovely lovely people kind of running this shit